I call for a motion to return to open session. Is no. there a motion? I'll make a motion. Bob, is there a second? Jason, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, abstain. Ayes have it. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Board combinations and presentations, recognition of August graduates and presentation of the diplomas. Dan Lalanich, the school superintendent and Mr. White, the principal. Just a lot of members of the board community. Uh, tonight's a special meeting for one of our, our young ladies in high school. Um, and the uh, and, and the principal of Mount Newfield High School, I'm certified with Amy Clark, has fulfilled all the requirements set forth in the New York State Education Law, and Mount Newfield District Policy. She is now prepared to receive recognition for the work she has that's the way Sage and those in the room, by the power vested in me by the Board of Regents of the State of New York and as Superintendent of Schools, it is my honor to confer upon you, Sage Hawks, the Niagara Wheatfield High School Diploma with all the rights and benefits pertaining unto her. Sage, you want to <laughs> Mr. White, picture here. We're gonna we're gonna actually take. Can we take a break for a few minutes right now? Okay. So. Okay, so we'll take uh, 10 minutes. Does that work? We'll take a 10 minute break to enjoy the cookies and punch in the bag. Please, some refreshments. Please help yourself. I love those shoes. <laughs>
We'll start the meeting. Um, we'll start off with privilege of floor. Oh, I'm sorry, the CSCP presentations. Okay, so yep. So tonight we have both our high school and middle school we be presenting their CSA uh, plans. So um, I'll turn it over to our high school and middle school. <laughs> Good evening. Um, the high school comprehensive plan uh, is detailed for you in a couple of different ways. Um, Mrs. Fiorella, Ms. Myers, and I are going to share our plan with you. Uh, and you'll notice when we, we talk about the, the plan a little bit that um, there are three main objectives for the district, and there, we have multiple things listed under each. But is the case many times, so many things listed under one objective also meet the need or you know, fill a, a role under another objective. Uh, so we'll, we'll just get started and we'll, we'll go through it quickly for you. Uh, you know, district, the goal number one is the district will continue to cultivate a safe, happy, inclusive and supportive environment. And there are many ways we're addressing that this year. Um, we are very fortunate to have uh, a Lewiston PD uh, member, our SRO, we also have have a school safety officer that's on our campus daily from 7.30 in the morning until 11.30. Um, we practice all of our fire drills, our lockdown drills, our shelter in place drills. Uh, many times those things happen uh, in an unplanned fashion, uh, but you know the faculty and the students respond very well to every one of those. Um, the vape detectors in our restrooms do notify us of you know, either a loud noise or someone you know, uh, vaping or, or using something else in there that they shouldn't use. We make every effort to get to those restrooms or address the students that um, are partaking in, in such an endeavor in those rooms. Um, the weapons detection system in the morning, we do have three sets of those right now. We use two for the main flow into the building. One is an overflow where we wanna check a student a second time. Uh, initially, when we, we, we started it the first day or two, it took us uh, a little extra time to get in the building. Uh, but we've refined that to the point now that when our bus is discharged at 730, all of our students from the bus are in the building by 740. We do close the front door at 745 in the morning. Uh, and typically the students that are there from 740 to 745 are those students that drive themselves, uh, maybe linger in the parking lot, wait for a friend or a uh, you know, parent drops them off. Uh, we currently are a single point of entry. It's only the front doors that we call it a single point. You know, it's multiple doors, but it's all with, contained within that vestibule and, and secured by six adults, uh, teachers, including uh, the SSO and the SRO. Uh, Michelle and Aaron and I uh, are in the area as well. We assist with that when needed. Um, a lot of what we do is make sure the students take things out of the backpack that they know uh, will probably trigger the alarm so the SSO uh, can check it or one of the um, Dawn Patrol teachers there. Uh, as far as building culture goes, we've made a serious effort to increase the number of clubs and activities just as we did last year. Uh, some of those from last year we lost because we, you know, we just didn't have the grant funding for them. Uh, but it seems like every time we turn around, somebody wants to start something new, and we certainly encourage teachers to do that. Uh, our restorative justice or practice committee uh, met over the summer. Uh, and, you know, there were a number of meetings over the summer. They continue. Many of our teachers are doing informal circles with their classes, and that's encouraging to see. It builds rapport, builds relationships, uh, not just between teacher and student, but between student and student. Um, it's a unique uh, thing to watch. Uh, students that you wouldn't think would uh, often engage with one another, um, become good friends, look out for one another, take care of each other, not just in that classroom where they feel safe with that particular teacher, but in other places throughout the building. Uh, we meet with our students uh, every year at the beginning of the year by grade level. We share all of our rules, practices, policies, protocols. Uh, we want everybody to understand what the expectations are uh, you know, for being a high school student. Uh, our traffic safety program that we did last year in the spring before prom uh, is something that we intend to do again uh, with the involvement of law enforcement in our, in our uh, fire departments uh, to share traffic accidents, some of the safety uh, procedures, the, uh, how the call is made. And, and we talk about um, good behavior. 
positive behavior, looking out not only for yourself, but for your friends. Um, we are a family. We attempt to take care of one another as a family, and, and that's the approach we take. Um, <laughs> good night, ladies. Uh, our students that do occasionally fracture a rule and, and you know, partake in something they shouldn't, whether it's, you know, vaping or something a, a little um, more significant, uh, chant the North Point uh, group comes in and we do, we do counseling sessions for our students that have been um, vaping. And we just recently began to, as part of our counseling component for suspensions when necessary, uh, they will also provide counseling to our students for more of a cessation type of practice. And obviously the Lewiston Police Department is on call and we need them. And you know they've been very responsive to all of our needs. Um, Kara Kirk, Caitlin Jones, the, the Family Resource Center, uh, it, it, you know, that room, it gets so much donated to them and it's used daily. If parents come daily and you know, we see them going to that room and they always leave with the things that they need to make their life a little bit simpler. Um, Kara has also been very helpful, responsive when we need to contact uh, the community or partnership with somebody whether it's for counseling or whether it's for additional supports uh, similar to our, our, um, our resource center. Uh, Mr. Profrock uh, in our health class, he gets a cadre of speakers from Niagara County to come in to, to address all sorts of uh, issues pertaining to health and health education with his students. And this year, uh, we've added an additional counselor to the counseling department. The career mentor position uh, was dissolved in the sense that it was solely one person and each of the counselors has assumed a portion of that role uh, so we can better uh, respond to student needs and, and help them through the process of uh, whether it's work, school, or, or the military. Um, Paul Nowatka from BOCES, the compliance officer, uh, our safety officer, is here routinely. I, it's almost like you see him once a week. We, you know, we have a conversation often about what's happening in the building. And our invisible mentor program is, uh, you know, students complete a survey and that survey allows them to indicate what adult in the building they feel safe with. If they had an issue, if they needed some support, some trusted adult they could go see. Uh, we haven't finished it yet. We began last week with our seniors, juniors are this week, then with sophomores and freshmen because freshmen at this point would have had the last opportunity uh, the least opportunity to develop that rapport with adults. And the obje objective is uh, when the survey is done, we take a look at it, we identify those students that don't have that trusted adult. Our counselors begin uh, those conversations with students and we foster that relationship throughout the building. And so that's, uh, that's the health and, and safety portion of uh, the district or the high school. Good evening, thank you. Our second goal is providing learning and experiences that accelerate academic and social, emotional, and physical student learning. Um, we started off our school each month. We have a faculty meeting that we're having and bringing outside agencies to help support our teachers and to continue to educate them, whether it's AI or um, talking about different mental health and supports and resources to bring into the classrooms for the teachers. Um, we're also looking at our expectations and procedures that we're having at the school, um, reviewing scope and sequence and our CSEP goals. Um, and working with BOCES to continue to bring any outside supports into the classrooms. Um, we had class meetings in the beginning of the year to go over the school's policies and procedures, talk about our extracurricular activities and opportunity, and again, to review the code of conduct and our expectations from the school and the district with our students. Uh, we held a freshman orientation right before school started. We did freshman orientation and new students this year to welcome the students and the families into the district. We gave them tours. It was a great opportunity for us to work with the kids and to look at schedules. We were able to even make some changes for families and students so that when they started the first day, they got a, a good feel of the building and they're ready to go. We've held some team meetings with our administrative, clerical, and counseling. We've had a lot of change and new staff coming on, so we're working together as a team to develop some new policies and procedures and routines for us. Um, we're continuing to work with the district and the curriculum department to work with um, office, provide professional supports and development. We're reviewing or updating our course objectives and what our course reviews are. Um, we're looking at getting that done a little bit sooner this year so we can provide additional courses. 
We've added five new courses that we're look, possibly looking at for the upcoming school year. Um, principles of investing in wealth management, model UN, women's studies, sports literature, intro to philosophy. We've had a lot of teachers with piques of interest in offering different electives for our students. So it's an exciting time for us. Um, we have Mrs. Young and Mrs. Lingle offering doing the seal of biliteracy this year again. And we have a new seal of civic readiness held by uh, Ms. Biscady, um, which we've had a lot of interest in with a lot of seniors actually taking place with that too. So it's a great opportunity. Our special programs continues to grow. Ms. Razzarella and Ms. Dixon are continuing with the Felton's Cafe. Our 15 to 1 are, you know, continuing. We have our resource room and our integrated co-teaching. So everything's still moving along and growing in that department. Uh, we're looking at our regents this year, utilizing results from last year, the data analysis, and inform, like, how to direct our future instruction. We're moving our ELA exam this year. We normally offer that allow our students to take it in January. We're going to hold that and not take it till June to allow our juniors a couple extra months to access that curriculum to have better score results at the end. Uh, we're doing professional development with BOCES for the school to continue improvement. Um, we're doing book studies. We have Erie One instructional technology supports. We're doing crisis intervention. We had a TIG training that offered 35 hours over the summer that we had many um, staff, whether it was clerical, teachers, um, administration, all different levels of uh, supports in that TIG training over the summer. So that was a great response. We also did a CPR renewal during Wellness Day that we had a great turnout as well. Uh, we do Academic Learning Center this year. We continued with that, continued supports for social science and English, language arts, uh, the remedial services through Academic Learning Centers, and we're offering a math lab daily for every period, which has been great. We also have our AIP for our academic instructions for students who are removed from the day-to-day -day curriculum in school. Um, we extended that by an hour this year, so it's from 2.30 to 5.30, so that students are getting that instruction. Um, and it seems to be working out really nicely with that extra hour this year. And then last but not least, we're also holding our um, ASAP. We're having after-school tutoring with Sean O'Brien and the National Honor Society students. They're high school students who are mentoring and working and supporting and tutoring our other students from throughout the school. Thank you. Uh, goal number three, the district will continue to increase community engagement and strengthen partnerships. We have uh, several clubs, so we'll highlight a few of them. Our Native American club, they promote awareness. They're having a Native American Spirit Week, which will be the week of November 13th, and they do different planned activities and celebrations. They're actually heading to Syracuse University next week for their Native American Outreach Day. Uh, Jamie Gilbert is taking, I think it's 26 students to that. Uh, as Michelle said, we had incoming freshmen and new student orientation. We will have a musical uh, this spring. It'll be a little earlier because of the auditorium uh, demolition and remodel. So that'll probably be in March. We have our vocal and instrumental concerts. We have one on the 7th next week. Uh, Pavas Children's Theater. We just had our one act plays last week. Um, Mrs. Doby and Mrs. DiBernardo run those. Career Center events, uh, our counselors have taken on that role. So you can see there's a ton of things going on all the time. We have uh, colleges in at least once a week. I think there's a different college here for students to meet and greet and um, learn about their programs. We, you can go ahead. We had uh, homecoming week. There's a couple pictures there. We did a spirit week during that week. We had the pep rally. We brought Falcon Fest back this year, but it was during lunch period. So the kids are here and they could access it during the day. We had a lot of teachers helping out with that. So that was really nice. We had our homecoming game, our homecoming dance, which was outside. Um, the kids just loved it. It was really, they had a good time and they were all well behaved. Uh, we have a couple different spirit weeks. We are in the middle of Halloween spirit week. So there's some pictures down there on the bottom. Um, the kids it was really great. A lot of kids dressed up and usually the high school kids don't. Um, so there's some teachers in there, kids. We have a holiday spirit week during uh, Christmas week, beautification of the building. So we've got the eco campus, our rotary club, uh, stained glass art installation is on hold, but we also have our bulletin boards throughout the building that teachers kind of take it upon themselves and, and change and renew. And then uh, Google Classroom. So each teacher maintains a Google Classroom so that the kids can access their curriculum, but also the parents can have access to that as well. So that's a list of all of our clubs. Um, 
as Mr. White said, we did lose a couple due to grant funding, but we still have a lot of opportunities for our kids. We have art club, book club, business marketing, honor society, character council, our low uh, gay straight alliance, interact, national honor society, Native American club, newspaper, outdoor adventure club, environmental club, Pavas, pep club, science club, and talent which that picture in the corner, um, it's take a look at teaching and Beth Piscati is heading that. And she had students here from Lockport. Um, they worked with someone from BOCES to talk about building community and relationships in schools and what makes a good teacher. Our National Honor Society, all members of the National Honor Society must complete a minimum of 30 service hours. They work with the Eco Campus. They have an induction. They did the breast cancer walk. They just had their blood drive. Um, this week. Outdoor club, they just went to Allegheny uh, last weekend. That's a picture of some of the kids on the trip. They do an Earth Day celebration. Our senior class has a lot of exciting activities. Um, they planned the homecoming dance, which as I said, was, was really great. Senior breakfast, their prom, cap and gown, um, elementary walkthroughs. They get to revisit their old schools. Senior awards, barbecue, and then ultimately graduation. Interact club, they help with open house, Earth Day, they work with uh, Northgate Nursing Home and they have a collaboration with students in South Africa. Season of giving, so that'll be coming up soon. They do a food drive, coats for kids, 12 days of giving. Uh, parent engagement, open house, we do, do an eighth grade to ninth grade orientation. And actually I thought our open house was really well attended this year, so that was good. And then our senior art show. And that's it. In your folders, there's a copy of the PowerPoint, and then there's also the um, template with a lot more information on these bulleted items. Any more questions? Any questions for Mr. White and then his team? I guess go ahead. I'm Eleanor Payne. Very good. <laughs> I'm Eleanor Payne and then we have Kelly Moore. You're going to see a lot of uh, similar uh, programs that we run at the middle school and at the high school. So you're gonna see those overarching pieces. And as we know, with the board goals, goals one and two and three, we really aligned this year um, that it, on your tables, you have a white folder that has a copy of this PowerPoint, also the in-depth CSEP, as well as an example that I will go through how the CSEP really plays an important part in our planning uh, throughout the year. So as we move forward, now our CSEP goals were obviously designed to align with the district board goals. And we looked at our data, our attendance data, our behavioral data, as well as our academic data and how kids are doing. And this is how we came up with these goals. And, and it's also a collaborative piece where we meet with our teachers to say, let's look at this. What are some of those things that we're doing? What are some things that need to be changed? So it's really, this is a living document and we continually update it every, I mean, even up till last week, we updated it because we made a change to it. And as I said, in the middle school, you know, we do, we have, it is a community of belonging. We truly believe that true belonging doesn't require that we change who we are, but requires that we be who we are. And that's really our overarching theme at the school. You belong either academically, whether you're a student, a parent, community member, this is where you belong. So when we look at goal one, this is, you'll see some of those similarities. When we look at our safe environment, we've had the SRO for the last two years. I am telling you what a benefit that is to our school. Not only the point that their presence is there, but also the interaction that they have with our students. It is the most dynamic thing because remember, it's just the two of us, but having that third person to help assist, to help talk, just to keep things, um, particularly like in the cafeteria, you know, things happen. Uh, we can't always be there, but just to have that presence and the rapport, particularly with the current SRO that we have, Rebecca, she's just magnificent in the way that she interacts with those students and the parents. So that has really helped. During the day, we do have the SSO, four hours, magnificent. Now, if you notice, I do have a picture uh, right next to number three. We've actually perfected our entrance into the building through the two openings where it is quick. We can unload in what? Three, four minutes. Yeah, three, four, three to four minutes. Kids come in, boom, boom, boom. You know, they're in class. The kids, we open the doors at 727 and the kids are probably, most of them are in class by 730, 735. So it is, 
you know, but it is, it's that cost of reminder of what they need to remove from their backpacks. So, I mean, we, we kind of have a well-oiled machine now. It works well. There's actually a two SRO, or the SRO, the SSO, Kelly and I, and then we have some teachers and we just, it just uh, flows with that weapons detection. Um, something that we added last year is also the, you know, the one point entry, everybody, that's old news now. Everybody knows that that's the way you come in. You can't come into the door. It, it really works perfectly. When we look at the health environment of our students, the free breakfast and lunch really truly set the stage for our students, not only behavioral wise, but also during lunch, just you know things that things of what they would need. Um, our family resource center, which I said, you know, the support center, what an asset because not only, you know, middle school philosophy is really about taking the whole child, taking care of the whole child, but also we're also taking care of the whole family. So that really is something that's very important. We are able to provide mobile counseling through our family support center as well, where um, we do have the counselors, outside agencies come in to speak to our students. And oftentimes the parents will be with them. So it's a great connection with that. Our EAP program um, for our teachers when needed through- um, um, Yep, so we, so we have the NW Cares yes. and North Point. Counselor. Yeah, North Point. I was like, I can't, I couldn't think of that. I mean, yep. that, We've had teachers that have access that, and that's really important because we also need to let the adults in the building know and the staff that if you need support and assistance, that's there for you. Um, Kelly has done a phenomenal job as well with the teachers getting speakers in and, um, and talking to our students in just an array of different pieces, yeah. primarily in the health classes, you'll hear that, um, but as well as, you know, we're, we've formed a character ed education, there was a need after we did the invisible mentor survey, that there was a need that we really needed to set the program for our students and for teachers. So every month we've aligned our student of the month to be aligned with the character education, with our character uh, uh, ed, committee, ed committee pieces, and it aligns month to month. So if anybody asks, what is today? Well, just look in the agenda with September and October. From that, we spent, if you look at the, the top corner with the teachers, with Mrs. Bucci up at that top corner, we spent three days over the summer building a curriculum. And I believe I did send a copy of that to you um, in our update. Month by month, teachers know it has activity, what the character ed uh, uh, is, and what are some useful resources that we can use. We added the mindful minute every Monday. So it's mindful Monday where we kind of set the stage for the week. And each lesson um, flows with that. So it really, truly has been um, a great start to the year with that. And we compared our behaviors from last year to this year, and they are significantly lower than they were at this time. So we are keeping track of that data. We do have an inclusive environment with some of our clubs. We do have our Native American Week. We have web. And up at the top, you will notice the number of sixth graders that came to us. Web is where everybody belongs. It's a program in which it helps the sixth graders transition into middle school, but it also uh, looks at our eighth grade leaders. We have student leaders who have groups and they work with those groups. Our advisors um, have done a dynamic job in preparing students and um, having them lead those conversations and those activities. What, I mean, it's just been a wonderful program. Um, we do sometimes, and I think you've heard me say this, last year I did a kudos award at every faculty meeting, just thanking teachers and just letting them know, I appreciate you for this is what you do. Um, and I thought about it just last week, last September when I started this, I'm like, why aren't I doing this for the whole staff? So I changed it. And now every Friday I do a, a Friday follow-up where I just prepare uh, the staff of what's happened and then prepare them for the next week and i and in it now i have this little section every month where i did a kudos award where there are cleaners there are srps there are just people that are in our building that i need to recognize to say thank you and it's, sometimes it's just those little things that mean a lot the offshoot of student of the month is our golden wing award which is also an offshoot of the monthly award that you have so what we've done is we bought little golden uh, wing awards for all our students who come to the board meeting and they have a pin as well. With the HSA, they have just been so supportive in all our endeavors that they have collaborated with Rainforest Cafe where the student receives a certificate 
they receive a gift card to play the arcade and a free dinner. What a great way for family to get involved. So I'm really appreciative that they were able to support that for us. When we look at our goal two, some of the highlights, now we're digging into those academics. If you look on the third handout, which was my August opening day presentation in pages six and seven, this is where, this is truly what the crux and the goals of our school are um, with this. We've really looked at our accelerated and remedial classes. And also we thought before beforehand, if we needed student data, we needed to go to this one area first to go pull this attendance. Then we had to go here to pull the behavioral attendance. Then we had to go here to pull um, grade attendance. EduClimber has been a wonderful tool because now it's just all in one place. And it's so much easier when we wanna talk about a student, it pulls all that information for us. If we wanna look at a cohort, if we wanna look at a group, everything is, is right there. We set the thresholds of what we're looking for, but it is a phenomenal tool. We do use it in our CST meetings because now teachers are able to use the uh, form there. It's a check sheet, but it also asks them to look at their tiered interventions. Tier one, what are you doing in the classroom for all? Then CST, we look at, okay, are there tier two interventions that we could put in place? And what are those tiers three and not only for academics but also for behavior so we're looking we could be looking at both we have usable data which is phenomenal so we, we now use ixl for ela and math usella which can be used for science social studies and ela our fast bridge testing so if the student needs any remediation there are lessons right in fast bridge that they can access and everyday labs currently we're using that as well as a tool for attendance because it does give the parents the nudge letters, the calls um, to say, hey, we need them in school for that. Our clubs and activities is as large as the high schools as well. Um, any student has any opportunity to be part of a club. And so we ensure that we've provided that with them and being able to do that. We have this year, we do, we have newspaper club, student council, um, Kiwanis club, chess chess club. I mean, there are just so many things that students can be a part of and, it, and it's wonderful what, because once again, the middle school is where they belong and we want them to feel and sense that. Um, but we are still working with the National Federation of Just Communities. Last year, we were able to have them in during health classes for grades seven and eight. This year, we're actually going to be working with our sixth grade. So we're going to have a six, seven, eight component with them. Um, our character education committee, we meet once a month. We really do a lot of work um, and it's good work. And the staff appreciates the fact that they don't have to like come up with these pieces that we've done that. Once again, I've said, if you looked at um, our PD during faculty meetings, I sent that in the board report as well. Each one of the faculty meetings is not an administrivia. What it clearly is, is really we we're doing work. It's professional development in a quick snip every month and it really addresses those tier one and tier two interventions that teachers can use in the classroom, whether you're a PE teacher, whether you're the music teacher, art, health, ELA, math, we wanted to make sure that really encompassed. Our first two meetings really had to do with CBT testing because we're going to be using the use of the computers. And we had a uh, Kelly here, yeah, um, who came in and just gave teachers tools because teachers were asking, how do you use Cami? Wait a minute, you're using Canva? Wait a minute, how do we do this? So after over two sessions, the teachers got a, a, a taste for it and they're currently using Padlets in their class now as another additional tool. So it really got them to using it. And also it's great practice because sometimes I think as adults, we're the ones that are inhibited. The kids know what they're doing. They can use them. I think it's just our apprehension in using those things. And then just to wrap up with goal three, um, with increasing uh, community engagement and strengthening the partnerships, um, you know, with getting to the whole child and educating the whole child, it is so important to make sure the community, the parent, the family, the school, the child um, can 
for herself too, are all connected. Um, so there's a number of different things that we do to just reach out to the community and have that joint partnership. So the eco cleanup club, student recognitions, teacher recognitions. I want to just kind of really pinpoint, you know, our students, that's why I feel like our di discipline has decreased this year compared to last year, is just constantly reviewing our Falcon fundamentals, which are be respectful, responsible, and safe every single day, and kind of going back to the basics and modeling for our students, you know, proper behavior, what's appropriate, what's not appropriate, and just overall being a very respectful, kind person. So by constantly recognizing our students, having them on our display wall, um, announcing them over the um, PA system, and just really signifying that what they're doing, we're celebrating versus, you know, always pinpointing the negative. We really want to celebrate the positive and all the good stuff that's going on at the middle school. Um, everyday labs, e-school, those are just different ways for us to access, you know, all of our student data. Um, open house, there's a few pictures there from open house. We had a wonderful turnout for all of our grade levels with parents coming in, listening to all of our teachers, hearing about, you know, what their syllabus will be for the year, um, taking a walk and a tour of the building, just really becoming familiar with the middle school. Um, sixth grade being their first time in the middle school was really dynamic with uh, a great, great turnout of parents and families. Um, and everybody, we got really positive feedback on how it was planned, how it was organized. They all had their student schedules. They were able to, if we had to make any changes, we were able to do that. Um, but I think it's so important for once you plan these things, but just to constantly um, publicize it and get that communication out so that they do have, we do have a great turnout. Um, our concerts are always wonderful. Our, our spring, our fall concert, they are practicing for our students. Our musical this year is Frozen Junior. Um, so it'll be our last time in this um, odd with, you know, with Frozen. So we're super excited about that performance coming up. And of course, all of our sporting events. Um, the students absolutely love Mrs. Payne and myself. We try to go to as many sporting events to support them as possible. And um, they just love seeing us there as well. So we want to kind of give back. It's great to see families outside of the building just at the soccer field or, in, you know, watching the volleyball game. Um, I do want to highlight just one of our presenters that are coming. We have um, John Pinkton coming in on November 21st and, and not really coming in, but it's an anti-bullying assembly where through a New York State grant fund, he was able to, he's a motivational speaker. He goes around to many schools and different continents and countries to get that anti-bullying message out. And he speaks about his experience is when he was younger. So after we have a wonderful anti-bullying presentation to each grade level, we get to Zoom in with him. And he's calling in from California. So our students will actually have 20 minutes with him for every grade level to just do a little quick Q&A. Um, he also is a Guinness Book World Record where he took two frying pans and with his strength and might, he can roll them up. So it was just like, we're trying to find really exciting presenters that have a great message, but yet very exciting for our students. So we will have John with us. He also wrote a book that I was able to get 750 copies of for free through this free New York grant um, that every of our eighth graders will get it because <clears throat> it's a fantastic, wonderful book, yet very sensitive in places. So we just want to make sure that um, it's age appropriate and that our students are, you know, walking away with, with the messages in a very appropriate way. Um, another way just to strengthen our partnerships is through our HSA. We have a wonderful, wonderful connection. We meet with them on a very regular basis and they're all students first, student driven, student centered, and we really have a great, great support with them. So we couldn't ask for anything better with them. They're wonderful. Um, and just the Kiwanis Club, for example, to our students just connecting with community service projects and what can they do to give back to our wonderful um, NW community. So that's kind of wrapping up from what the middle school does. Thank you. Does any board member have any questions? Thank you. Thank we, uh, uh, we'd like to thank all five of 
and whoever else helped in putting this presentation together. You all did a great job. We really appreciate it. You know, we sometimes don't understand how much time, work, and effort it takes for you to come to get to this state, you know, this meeting to try to educate us on what's going on in there. So again, great job and we thank you. Privilege of the floor. Are there any resident comments? Everyone signed up. Thank you. Consensa, consensus agenda items. I will now call for a motion to approve the following consensus agenda items. One through eight as submitted. Is there a motion? Bob, is there a second? Julie. Any discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Abstain. Ayes have it. Thank you. I'd like to get a motion. Personnel items one through nineteen. Is there a motion? Mike, is there a second? No second. Bob. Uh, any discussion? Does anyone want to be separated anything on? Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Abstain. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Um, I'd just like to introduce uh, Joshua Bennett in the back. He's uh, been hired as a substitute cleaner. And Joshua, we wish you good luck. And we do appreciate you coming out tonight. Thank you. Uh, the student me member, ex officio Ben, was not feeling good, and he he was uh, he understood what his job is, and he asked Dan to do a presentation for him. <laughs> so ben, uh, incredibly conscientious, um, that was did send me uh, a little note. He wanted to make sure that everybody knew uh, a few important things, even though he couldn't make it here tonight. So uh, first of all, he said that um, Halloween Spirit Week's been great. Uh, Wednesday is, was actually flannel day. I'm guessing if it wasn't a school way to get to partake. Um, there's a Halloween scavenger hunt that they had that was incredibly successful. Um, students in between periods had to solve riddles to win prizes. Um, he mentioned that on Fridays, the Nest Cafe will be op open, I think through the month of November, correct? And... Uh, he also mentioned that uh, our fall, fall sports season uh, was coming to a close, but that our teams did exceptionally well and that our winter sports meetings um, are coming up for the individual teams and that the winter sports meeting for the athletic department is actually scheduled, scheduled for tomorrow um, at 6 p.m. in the auditorium. So great job, Ben. Thanks for sending that along. Uh, I hope you're resting and not watching this at home. <laughs> Thank you. Standing committees, capital project committee. Uh, yes, uh, we had a capital projects uh, committee meeting today. It went very well. Uh, we had a couple loose ends we tied up on three of our major projects. One, of course, is the auditorium. Uh, the other one is the tennis court. And if anyone wants to see the picture of this tennis court, it's really amazing. And our third one was actually our the uh, middle school shop renovation. And by the looks of what we have here, it's gonna be pretty nice going forward, so. Thank you, Bob. Thanks. President's report, nothing. Superintendent report, Dan. We do have a few things. Uh, Tom, if you could give a quick update on hiring. Thank you. Uh, just an update to the board. We are again, uh, once again, state that we're in a very good position right now as far as our staffing. The most uh, uh, broad changes we've had, you know, with personnel that are, are staffing our fleet, some of the um, updating of the fleet uh, coordination, meaning uh, bus attendants, some drivers, and a few driver recruits, which is great news. Uh, just today, uh, two members of uh, 
uh, the HR department were at the uh, New York State Department of Labor Workforce One workshop, and part of their uh, recruitment efforts were uh, to try to find additional drivers for that. So I, I can update the board on that. There was a few candidates that we did have conversations with there. Um, fairly sparse turnout, unfortunately, overall. Uh, sometimes we had excellent turnouts. Today was not one of those days. Um, however, we're going to continue our efforts. Uh, I think I mentioned to the board just, just uh, previously at the last meeting, and if I didn't, I apologize uh, if you're hearing it again. But, you know, we went to 62 different locations in the town of Niagara, town of Lewiston, city of Niagara Falls, uh, Sanborn area, uh, and peppered the area with leaflets, you know, with our new QR code. And that has definitely helped us, believe it or not. And I mean, it's, it's, it's sorted some interest for us. So it's fantastic. An update. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as was mentioned, the middle school musical is coming up. It is Frozen Junior. And um, board members, I ask you to check your email from Mr. Shimei. He did send some information. If you're interested in tickets, you can send him something back. The shows are going to be Friday, December 1st at 7 p.m., Saturday, December 2nd at 7 p.m., and Sunday, December 3rd at 2 p.m. So that should be pretty exciting. The, uh, as far as a sectional update is concerned with our sports, the girls soccer team uh, is off to regionals. So congratulations to them. They are playing in Rochester at 4 p.m. on Saturday. The boys volleyball is playing tonight at West Seneca West. Uh, our cross country team is competing uh, this weekend uh, at Bemis Point. That's the section six qualifiers and girls swimming also this week and um, section six state qualifiers. So good luck to those who are still uh, in, in the playoffs. Uh, oh, well, let's see if we can get somebody uh, to go to states. The um, NW Falcon Wall and Hall of Fame is this Saturday. For those um, who don't know, um, we've now um, six, seven years now, um, had an induction ceremony bringing in um, both our athletes and coaches who have uh, done incredible things in our district. Um, but also the wall of fame is set up to honor those um, who have done other things for our school community, um, whether it's through, through education, community service. Um, if you go to our website, you can um, nominate people for next year. This year's ceremony begins at 10.30 a.m. Doors actually open an hour before that at 9.30 a.m. Ceremony is in the auditorium. Ceremony is free. For those who um, have prepaid, there is a luncheon that follows, and we're really excited to honor these people into our uh, Wall of Fame. If you've never um, had a chance to see it in our main foyer, once you walk in the front doors, um, our Wall of Fame, all of our Wall of Fame inductees are there. And then if you go down towards our cafeteria and uh, um, make a right-hand turn to our um, gymnasium, you can see our very large athletic Hall of Fame and both um, the Hall and Wall continue to grow. I want to thank uh, the committee who do a lot of work to make this happen, and particularly uh, Al Kogel, who, who really takes the lead there. The uh, UPK reimbursement uh, practice in New York State is changing this year. And we found out about this uh, after the start of the year. So the way it worked in the past was this. If we had um, uh, our highest number of students in the program, let's say it was 120 during that year, we would get reimbursed for 120 students at the end of the year. They've done it that way since we've been part of the program. This year, they've decided, um, without it asking for any input, the, they, meeting with the New York State Education Department, decided that their plan is to only reimburse for the number of students who are on the in the program on a particular day, and they've set a date, and that date is, I believe, March 15th. So let me just point this out for you. Let's say we've had 110 students in the program this year. And by and that's how that, that was the highest number. And let's say 110 students are in the program until March 14th. And then on March 15th, for some reason, 10 kids drop out of the program. They're going to reimburse us for the number that are in the program on March 15th. 
dollars. We get approximately six thousand dollars per kid. That's times ten. That's sixty thousand dollars that we're not getting for the students who have been in that program. Now, all along, rightfully so, we've been paying the bill to Bunny Bunch to service our students. Now, after March fifteenth, let's say we add three more kids, we don't get reimbursed for those either. So students move in. So it's um, just not making sense to to any of us. Uh, on our end, we did have a conversation with um, a couple representatives from the department, from within that pre-K um, early childhood education department, state ed. Um, they understood that, um, and I think really understood our concern. Um, they weren't the one making that decision. So we're gonna continue to push on this because it just doesn't make a lot of sense to us. Um, what it in essence does is it in future years will make us have to what hold some money back, um, decide as part of our program, we have professional development, we have resources for the teachers in those programs. Are we gonna hold those things back until after March 15th? So then you're not gonna provide your professional development for teachers for the entire year for that program and not give them the resources until afterward? I don't know, that doesn't make sense to me. I'm guessing it doesn't make sense to most people. So um, we're gonna hopefully make some inroads there. I just think it was just a little short-sighted. Sorry for the rant. Um, United States Department of Agriculture, um, as you know, the um, they lowered the community eligibility provision to 25%. That went into effect in our district uh, today. I didn't get any reports back on how that went on the numbers, but I'll bring that back to the board. There is one more thing under food service that I want to share with you. If you, it, I know it's a national thing and maybe you've seen something on it, but there's a, there's an issue with milk cartons and um, not having enough milk cartons or milk cartons for, for our students and for their breakfast, for their lunches. So um, right now, Dominic, the other food service directors in our area statewide, are all talking about different ways to still be able to provide milk to students if and when that shortage does happen. Um, the latest news, which was today, because I got an update from Dominic, he said, it's looking like November might be okay. Looking like it. Um, but the issue is, I mean, and think about this, like as far as worst case timing, how many districts in New York State have now been impacted with the number of people who can participate in breakfast and lunches. And at the same time, there's a shortage in the amount of curtains for milk. So there's a couple different possible solutions that you know we're talking about um, that may even have to be varied for elementary students versus secondary students. So we'll be working through that. Let's hope it doesn't truly materialize. Um, but it certainly sounds like it's possible that it'll be a problem. That's all I have. Thanks, Dan. Um, any reports to the board? Items for board discussion. Is there any old business? Any new business? Public comments? Any board member comments? Adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? I'm with the motion. Bob, is there a second? Jason, all in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. Abstain. Ayes have it. Thank you, everyone, and thanks for the presentation.